Hey there, it's Lee. How you doing? I thought I would do a quick thing. I'm watching the leftist freak out. I'm watching a thousand people at the SeaTac airport and stuff like that. I will do the normal stuff that I normally do. If you're not subscribed to the Strand Hand Report, you really should. It's a good broad view in the news every morning. I got to get up in a few hours and do it. Then I got to get on a plane and go to Washington, D.C. because I do this for a living. But I thought I would share with you now a true story about how the world works. Okay? Uh, so look this up. Don't take my word for it. I've talked many times about how in 2013 I went to Beirut, Lebanon. And I went to Beirut to cover the Syrian refugee crisis and talk about ISIS. This was when no one in the media was talking about it. But here's something you may not know, and anyone who's traveled can back me up on this. If I had gone to Beirut and I had had an Israeli stamp on my passport, guess what they would have done? Does, does anyone guess? Does anyone know? Anyone guess? Anyone? Uh, denied. That's right. Oh my goodness, you're right. I would not have been let in if I'd visited Israel. I'm going to go back over that again, right? I would not have been able to get into Beirut if I had an Israeli stamp on my passport. In fact, people told me I've never been to Israel, so it was easy. I got in because I didn't have that. But just think about that. Just ponder that for a minute. It's a country denying people entry based on what, that you visited another country? Didn't see the left protesting about that. That's what's so fascinating about the left. The complete lack of any context that they have. They're sheep. And by the way, all you people sitting at the airport at SeaTac, Islam hates you. They don't agree with you on anything. They don't agree with you on women's rights. They don't agree with you on gay rights. They don't agree with you on human rights. Go look up for yourself which countries have the death penalty for homosexuality. And then tell me what religion those countries are. Do you actually know anything about Islam? Because I, I can tell you, people on the left know as much about Islam as they do about Alinsky, which is nothing. And I can say that because I used to be on the left. They just literally don't know anything about it. I learned about Alinsky when Andrew Breitbart suggested I read Alinsky when I was writing for the Huffington Post. A lot of liberals are like, well, gee, I should get around to it, right? You have to understand this about liberals. You have to understand this. And if you're a liberal, I'll, I'll, I'm going to try to talk you down. They're brainwashed. They're completely brainwashed. They don't have any idea what's going on. They think they mean well because they think they're being nice to people. But should they ever deal with actual Islamists, they're the first against the wall. They're the first with their heads chopped off. They're the first thrown off the buildings. So I'm going to say something to liberals and get in, lean in close. Listen to me. Stop being suckers. You're making the world a worse place. You're causing the death, mutilation, and murder of women, gay people. You, you're, you're, you're dealing with a religion that does not respect religious diversity in any way. How many Christian churches are there in Saudi Arabia? Oh, that's right, you hate Christianity. And you know why you hate Christianity if you're liberal? Because your parents were Christian and you're acting out against them. Now maybe that's a crude psychological argument, but it's late and I'm tired of these people. But I pity them because they're brainwashed losers. And you can see that by the brainwashed loser who writes for New York Mag, who tried to attack me for a care a, a headline. It's completely factual. I have the lead story in Breitbart right now. Care, a group that the United Arab Emirates says is a terror organization. They can't dispute that, so he doesn't try to dispute it, but his brain-dead, sheep-like zombie followers are like, that's like a headline from The Onion. I've never seen anything like that. I don't know why I'm making them Southern. It's just the first accent that came to my mind. I mean, I could have gone, I don't know why that, I could have gone British, could have gone anywhere. But anyway, the point is, that's just my, that was my dumb accent, I guess. Like, I don't know why it's Southern. That's Southern phobic. And I shouldn't be Southern phobic, because you know, my mom was from Norfolk and I represent, I identify. I was raised in Massachusetts, but, uh, I identify as Southern. I can do that, don't label me. I can do that. I have the diabetes. My favorite food is chicken fried steak. I can do that. Ah, anyway, I just thought I would share that. That when I went to when I went to Lebanon, they wouldn't have let me in if I had an Israeli 
past, if I had an Israeli stamp somewhere, even if I'd gone over to Israel to like protest, I hate these Jews. Even if I had that stamped on my passport, they wouldn't let me in because that's the rule. And by the way, who cares? Because it's just Jews, right? Leftist, right? Who cares? Whatever. You got to protect the Muslims. Got to protect the Muslims because they love you. You have so much in common with them, right? You have so much in common with them, the Muslims. You, you do. You like Islam because you know a lot about it, which you don't. You don't know anything about it. Do you know how the books are ordered? in the Quran? Do you have any idea about that? Do you know? Do you know? By the way, how many people did Jesus kill? Can you name that number? This makes him very uncomfortable. It's a low number, by the way. Here's a hint. It's a, the number of people Jesus killed or ordered killed or talked about beheading. Very, very low. That's right. How about Muhammad? Anyone know that? Anyone know? No. Here's a hint. It's higher than zero. I don't know if you knew that. But you don't know anything about Islam, otherwise you wouldn't be sitting in an airport at night with a bunch of other stupid leftists trying to figure this out. Sorry I'm being a little blunt here, but these people are ridiculous. But thankfully the country is seeing that the Democrats are now the party of Allah. Way to go. Way to go, Democrats. By the way, make sure you get Keith Ellison in there. The party of Allah. That's exactly who I want you to be. Be the party of Allah. It's awesome. It's the best thing in the world. You're handing Donald Trump the election. You don't know what regular Americans think of you. You don't know how stupid you look because you're all around each other and you all have your signs and you're going to coexist. I'm just, I'm just in a bad mood. There you go. No, I'm not even in a bad mood. I'm in a good mood. I'm going to Washington tomorrow. I think I need these. I'm going to Washington tomorrow for a few days. That'll be fun. Citizen Journalism School, that's going great. Citizensjournalismschool.com. Should I pin that? Oh, by the way, of course, retweet this, retweet this. Warn the leftists that I'm making fun of them. That's fine. They do live in an echo chamber. I, I used to live in that echo chamber, so there you go. I'm doing all sorts of stuff in Washington, D.C. I'm not, I'm not going into specifics. I'm, I'm taking meetings and maybe doing some interviews. and I'm not even, I'm not in a bad mood, I'm in a surly mood. That's a better way to put it. I'm not in a bad mood. I'm in a good mood. I'm surly. I'm surly. These people are idiots. <laughs> They're idiots. They're putting themselves on the line for people who would never put themselves on the line for them. The Islamists never would put themselves on the line for your, you're not going to see a big turnout of Muslims at, at Pride. You're just not. And if you do, duck. If you do, by the way, if you do see them, hit the deck. Because the last time uh, a Muslim made a big appearance, I think it was in Orlando. I think that was the big thing there. Remember that? I think that's where that happened. And you didn't learn anything from that, did you? You didn't learn anything from that. Nothing. Largest terror incident after 9-11, you learned nothing from that, right? Okay. That's like, like I say, it makes it all so I was there. It's horrible. He was mentally unstable. Oh, so? So what? Oh, you're saying the guy who killed a bunch of people was mentally unstable? Oh, okay. So? He was also a Muslim who pledged allegiance to ISIS. Right? Are, are, you want me to say he was like mentally healthy? He was like the mentally healthy guy who killed 50 people. Is that what your standard is? Like he was mentally healthy like Manson or like Dahmer. Is that what you're saying? Do you understand how things work? People, people like you fascinate me. He was mentally unstable. So? Does that make him not Muslim? Oh, you're saying Muslims are normally mentally stable. You're saying that's a normally mentally stable religion, correct? And so he was like the exception, right? You're saying that Islam's belief about homosexuality is not what he believed, right? Is that what you're saying? Genius? Come on. Come right in. Do you know anything about Islam? Do you know what Islam believes about homosexuality and killing people for it? Because even, so let's, let's compare and contrast. Islam 
uh, throws uh, gay people out of buildings and hangs them, right? And the, the Christians you hate don't want to bake a cake. Let's really compare that. Now who's mentally unstable? You are, dummy. You are, dummy. You're the dumb one. It's offensive. And it, it's, it's not even funny because it leads to the death of people. So your little excuses about that are whack. Just whack. Completely batty. And, and that's just part of it. Yeah, it's really not funny anymore. Thank God. Thank God for Donald Trump. Thank God for Donald Trump. Thank God this country saw through. He had every single thing against him. And now what they're doing is they're doing what a lot of Americans thought should have been done a long time ago, which is just being realistic about what's going on. If you're on the left, I'm going to be realistic. These people want to kill you. Donald Trump is your savior. You should bow down and worship Donald Trump's hair. That's what you should do, right? It's probably a false idol. I don't know. It's not the most Christian thing in the world. I'll take that back. But I just want to point that out. So there you go. Anyway, just wanted to point out what's happening in the actual world. Go to, go to Beirut, have an Israeli stamp, and see if any Muslims are sitting in at the airport and they're going to sing a song, Mecca Lecca High, Mecca Heine Ho, or something like that, as you come in, as they try to, oh, look, they let Lee in. He had an Israeli passport. Thank God they let him in. See if the Muslims are there, the Druze, or anybody else. Mecca Lecca High, Mecca Heine Ho. Wee! That's the, this land is your, your land for Muslims, I think. I don't know. I may be confusing it with Pee Wee Herman, something like that. I may have the details wrong. But anyway, that's, that's what it is. That's what it is. What are you thinking? What are you thinking? But it's okay. It's okay. The rest of the country is smarter than you and thinks you're dummies. And a lot of them don't want to say anything because you're kind of violent dummies who like to punch people sometimes because they're Nazis. They're Nazis. You're too stupid to know what an actual Nazi is. By the way, do you know who collaborated with the Nazis? Stupid liberals. Do you know who collaborated with the Nazis? Any guesses? Oh, that's right. Muslims. That's right, Muslims. Do you know why? Because Nazis and Muslims hate the Jews, right? The Jews, like the Jews that run the anti-Semitic hate site I work for, Breitbart.com, where the CEO is Jewish and a lot of the editors are Jewish and it's owned by Jewish people, and Andrew Breitbart was Jewish. That's why I work for a Nazi site. See, you're so stupid, you don't know what a Nazi is. Who's the Nazi? The Jewish people I work for, are they the Nazis? Who's the racist? Joel Pollack, the Jewish editor at Breitbart who's married to a black woman? Are they the Nazis? You're so confused, you don't know what an actual Nazi is. An actual Nazi is like a fascist, which is what you're in favor of if you're on the left right now. You're in favor of fascism. You're in favor of fascism, but your brains are so scrambled, probably by common core math. Your little brains are so scrambled that you just go along with anything. Now, if, if, the, if the media tells you the Russians are, oh, the Russians are bad now, now the Russians are bad, right? You had no problem with the Russians until the media told you that the Russians were bad. You can't explain why the Russians are bad. You certainly can't explain why the Russians are worse than the North Koreans or the Chinese or the Saudi Arabians, right? You're just so stupid. Your little scrambled egg brains, you go along with everything the established media, and you think you're intelligent and independent. You're not. You're not independent. You're sheep. You're the worst sheep in the world. But enjoy sitting in at the airport. There you go. I told you I'm surly. I'm surly tonight. I'm not going to get that much sleep. I got two lead stories on Breitbart right now. The main lead stories. I'm glad. I'm glad I amused some of you. Glad I amused some of you. By the way, I'm just going to mention this. I have citizen journalism school where I talk about doing factual reporting, like the reporting I do. I'm surly, but my reporting is always factual, and these dummies cannot poke a hole in it at all. They don't know. They want to accuse me of stuff. I go after the right, too. Anybody who sees me goes, I go after the right as well. 
If I see the right doing things, I don't agree with them. But the right is not at least destroying the world, and the left is. And that's provable. I don't want to make films about it. But anyway, go to citizenjournalismschool.com. Citizenjournalismschool.com. i got a 10-minute video. If you haven't watched it, you should watch it. It's pretty cool. got a great offer for you. i got to go to D.C. tomorrow. Like I said, it's going to be fun being in D.C. because I'll actually have more time to get work done. Because I'll be in a hotel room most of the time alone. I got some meetings. I got some interviews. I'll tell you one of the things I'm trying to do. I'm trying to interview Congresswoman Gabbard. That's what I said, the one who went to Syria recently. I mentioned that. I was putting together my equipment list. And by the way, I'll talk about that at Citizen Journalism School. I have two videos coming out. I'm going to make another one in D.C. talking about how I pack on a minimal setup to do video now. So I'll give you a hint. I'm going to just use my iPhone 7. Separate audio, sync it up in Final Cut Pro. I talk about all that kind of stuff in the thing. But I really want to interview the Congresswoman. I want to see some of my friends. Cassandra. Maybe I'll see Cassandra. I like her. She's in D.C. Might be able to talk her into getting a drink. Might know her. Right. But I, there's, other, there's other reporters I want to see. There's other Breitbart. But I want to see Raheem Kassam. That's what I want to see. I'd like to be on the radio tomorrow. Here's the thing. I'd like to be on Breitbart News Sunday tomorrow night, but I don't want to freak Raheem out and show up. I think he thinks, I think he's going to think I'm stalking him. But we were really good on the radio last week, and it was fun, and I like being in the studio. I'm usually on the radio on the phone, so I, I really do want to be on, but I don't want to scare Raheem. Shh. I don't, I don't want to scare Raheem, but I would like to be on the radio tomorrow night, and it was a lot of fun. It really was good. And so since I'll be in town, I'm going to say to Raheem, and see, here's the worst part. I'll be honest. So I said on Facebook that I was going to be there, and Raheem liked it. So now I know Raheem knows I'm going to be in D.C. See, see this is so sad. I know Raheem knows I'm going to be in D.C. So if he doesn't invite me on the radio, then... He really does think I'm stalking me and doesn't want me in the radio, but it was really good. If you listened to it last week, Raheem and I were quite good. It was a quite good pairing. Again, that sounds creepy too. It does sound like I'm stalking him. I'm not, I'm really not, but it was fun. And I like being in the studio because I'm usually on the phone and it's more fun to be in the studio. And I think Raheem's a great host. That's the other thing. Now I should butter him up, but it's true. I do think he's a, is a, is a great host. So anyway. That's one of the things I want to accomplish. I got other meetings. I got some secret stuff. I'm going to try to go to the White House press briefing. I'm going to try to go to a State Department press briefing. And if I can't do that, I'm going to look at some office space. It's another thing I'm going to do. People ask of another thing I'm going to do. Have I had death threats? Sure. Yeah. I've had rape threats. I've had people threaten to rape me. I've had people do pictures of me tied up like they were going to rape me. That was fun. I've had people mock the death of my daughter. Let's go there. Shall we talk about that? We lost a daughter. My, my little son Ezra was there. He was a twin. His daughter, uh, his sister died at birth. Uh, she died right before birth. She died the day before, basically. Cord wrapped around her neck. Colette. That was his, that was, would have been my second daughter. So we lost, we lost our, our daughter. And I had people mocking the death of my daughter every day. Leftist mocking the death of my daughter every day. I would come home in the, in the, I would wake up in the morning, my wife would be crying because of this. So that lets you know how journalism is. And by the way, uh, very few people on the left said anything. And the few people who did, I'll tell you who one of them is, Natasha Leonard. Natasha Leonard, socialist, communist. I, she was the New York Times reporter who I reported was at that meeting got her fired, Natasha Leonard, and she just praised the black bloc for punching Richard Spencer in the face. But I will tell you that Natasha Leonard, when my daughter was, death was being mocked by people, Natasha Leonard was a decent person and reached out to me and told me she thought it was completely disgusting and spoke out about it. So uh, Natasha's earned a, a, a place in my heart for that. So don't agree with her politics. Think some of them are reprehensible. She thinks some of mine are reprehensible. But you know what? She was a decent person when not a lot of other people spoke up, right? Cassandra, Cassandra Fairbanks, same thing. 
But this is this is what happened. This is this is what happened. So people talk about death threats and stuff like that. Yeah, sure. Yeah, it's just par for the course. It's just par for the course. Welcome to our politics. And by the way, no stories about that or anything like that. No, no, no stories about that. So that's that's why when people were whining about Trump supporters trolling them with Pepe the Frog or whatever, it's like, hey, you know what? My my daughter died, and and, and it twins. So my wife, just picture what my wife had to go through. Just picture that, because I can't. I can't. Lost one baby, had another. By the way, this all happened a month after Andrew Breitbart died. A month after Andrew Breitbart died. And they mocked his death, too. Same people. Incessantly. Mocked and mocked and mocked. People who were funded. So there you go. There you go. That's it. Someone asked. There you go. Told you the story. He was not killed. Shut up. He wasn't killed. I know him. You don't. He's got a family. What kind of person are you to spread a rumor like that? He wasn't killed. He died of a heart attack. He was in the hospital with a heart attack a year earlier. What kind of person are you to spread that rumor? Did you know him? Did you know his family? You know his wife? You know his kids? You know the parents he left behind? So I hope you feel a little ashamed because you should. You should think before you talk about people. You really should. You really should think. I agree. Right. There are a lot of rumors, and I've talked about this before. It's disgusting to me that the rumor has got a million things. A million hits. If you look at how many, if you look at how many hits on YouTube, and, it, and I'll say it again. I've said it before. I'll say it again. I like some of the work Alex Jones does. I like some of the work Paul Joseph Watson does. But the fact that they got clicks off of Andrew Breitbart's death, really little dark place in my heart about that. Very, very bothersome to me. And that's one thing I, I look, you know, uh, citizen journalism school, I talk about ethics. There you go. So I didn't say reporters. It's, it's I'm not going to name the guy. People who've been following me for a while know who it is, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to name the guy. He's a nut. And I had to take him to court and then that got thrown out of court. Uh, uh, that's why when Donald Trump uh, says we need better laws for libel and defamation, he's actually right. Yeah, people, people do. I mean, yeah, Zotopsy was is very clear. And the whole thing about the coroner dying and everything else, it's crazy. Crazy. Just it's not. It's just factually not true. If 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 I thought Andrew Breitbart was killed, it would be the only story I would cover until the killer was brought to justice. That's it. So there you go. Anyway, sorry to end on a bummer. <laughs> and we went from my daughter dying to to Andrew Breitbart dying, and we Saturday night. But anyway, do love you guys. Thanks for sticking around. There you go. Talk to you later. See, I just keeps it real. That's what I do. I just keeps it real. Real smart. Good night, everybody. I got to get to bed. Stranahan Report in the morning. Sign up, Stranahan.com. I should point that out. It's free. You got nothing to lose. Stranahan Report, Stranahan.com. Sign up. Bye.